When I start looking at uh, urinary tract infections, specifically catheter-associated urinary tract infections, because the majority of the pathogens, they are good in our gut. Mm -hmm. But if you move them from the gut to the bladder, that's a different story. Right. How would immune response can differentiate that? Mm -hmm. When they are friends, so they are enemies, right? So then is when I went to Dr. Scott Holgren, which he's the guy of UTIs, mm -hmm. And uh, and nobody was paying attention to catheter associated UTI. Mm -hmm. Nobody cares about it. And I asked, like, why not most people are doing this? Like, well, it's because it's difficult. We most of the times what we have is just prevalence, right? Different clinical reports that say these are the pathogens in this place, these are mm -hmm. the pathogens in the other place. And we have many people developing novel catheters. But they were not really successful in the mm -hmm. clinic. So is when I start working on this. The reason that I was able to figure it out is because I was an environmental uh, biologist. The question is when probably many of the of your audience have seen different talks about uncomplicated UTIs, right? Mm -hmm. The first thing that we need to understand is these are not the same. Yeah. Right. Everybody in the clinic treat them the same because they are affecting the same organ, but they are not the same. So when you have uncomplicated UTIs, mostly affect women. Um, there is specific age bias when they're really young or postmenopausal, and um, there is the majority one pathogen, uropathogenic E. coli. Right. But when we look at catheter-associated UTIs, the, the rules have changed. Mm -hmm. First of all, we don't have age bias. If you have a urinary catheter, if you're small or old, you have similar predisposition to develop infection. If you, um, so we don't have age bias, you, we don't have gender bias. And other thing is that we have many microbes causing mm -hmm. the disease. And 76% of them are polymicrobial. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about different pathophysiologies, a different story. So when I start looking at that, I was focusing on the pathogens, not in the one that is able to cause infection like uropathogenic E. coli, because it can cause infection in both of the mm -hmm. uh, type of disease, but the ones that cannot. What is special with these ones? They cannot do that. If you put these pathogens to grow in urine, they don't grow. They don't grow well. So how they can infect the bladder? Mm -hmm. If you put them in a healthy bladder without the catheter, they don't cause infection. So what is the advantage that the catheter is providing mm -hmm. for these microbes to infect?